All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Lynn Woodland. Welcome to the Weekly Miracles course. I'm the author of a couple of books about miracles. The first one is called Holding a Butterfly, an Experiment in Miracle Making. And um, I actually like this book a lot. <laughs> um, this author's perspective. Um, but it actually, the minute you start reading it, you're drawn into a miracle-making experiment with all other readers. So it's about creating miracles simply in the process of reading and imagining yourself connected with so, so, so many other hearts and minds in this virtual reality. Um, the second book, The Breakthrough Point, A Spiritual Activist Guide to Thriving in a Modern World, that continues the, the experiment, but it also takes this really deep look at why these times are so crazy, why they're so unprecedented. And even though it was written um, 2016, um, it explains a lot of what's going on right now with the January 6th committee, all the craziness. It, it just looks at, uh, puts, puts all of that in perspective of human evolution, that, that we're, we're now in really an evolutionary leap. And that's why things are so crazy. And it gives really a, a hopeful glimpse into what sometimes looks like a world just going to hell. <laughs> um, now, what we're doing here every week the Miracles course, it's a year-long program. Uh, every week is a little bit of a different slant of personal and spiritual development where every weekly lesson is, is complete in and of itself. So you can drop in whenever you want without feeling like you're coming in in the middle of a course. And at the same time, each class builds upon the last much the same way one season leads into the other. In fact, the content of the course uses the four seasons as a template for the whole of the human journey, which means we cover a really wide range of personal and spiritual experience, all with the goal of not just creating one or two or three different outcomes in our lives, but really the goal of living miraculously, living a miraculous life. So there's no beginning and no end to this course. You know, wherever you jump in is your starting place. <clears throat> and it's why a lot of people choose to repeat the cycle of classes over and over again. Because every year, the same class is a whole different experience because we're different. Um, so you're going to want to have pen and paper handy for tonight. I say always have pen and paper handy for these, but I know tonight I'm going to suggest we use it. When we get into um, the height of summer, the, the month of July in particular, I like to give attention to the topic of prosperity because as nature is just blooming and growing and producing and coming up with all kinds of abundance, I like to give attention to what is that metaphorically, you know, in, in more of our tangible human life, prosperity. So that's what we're doing all month long. Um, <clears throat> and, and tonight I really want to talk about what it means to have true prosperity. Because true prosperity really has nothing to do with money and with how much of it we have. Uh, I, a few weeks ago here, I talked a little bit about Peace Pilgrim, one of my personal favorite role models, who lived a richly prosperous life filled with joy and purpose and good health and an abundance of everything she needed and wanted materially even though you know, she owned nothing. I mean, she was a vagrant. She was a pilgrim. She walked all over the country 
talking to people about peace. That's what she did. She was, you know, she, she slept out of doors. She <laughs> didn't own anything at all. And um, she just thought that life was a banquet. Now, on the other hand, I've known many people who have good incomes and beautiful homes and cars and other possessions, and yet they live in a state of just chronic financial struggle. And now, others have all the money that they want, but they lack the time or the health or the inner peace to really enjoy the material abundance that they've acquired. So prosperity is really a state of mind. And, you know, when we have it, we automatically program our lives to work financially. Whether we have a lot or a little, we have all of our needs and wants fulfilled. We have the ability to attract more without compromising our well-being in the process. And we're also able to create an abundant life even when we don't have an abundance of money. Um, if inward, inwardly we feel lack, we're never going to be satisfied with what we have. Consequently, no matter how much money we make, we'll just wind up creating debt and struggle and worry out of it. <laughs> I knew a woman who always impressed me as being highly prosperous, but not because of her great big huge income. I don't think she ever made a huge amount of money. But I, I met her um, many years ago when she was living on the tenuous income of a newly practicing massage therapist. And she would tell stories. I mean, she could just barely, you know, scrape her living. I mean, she was living penny to penny, massage to massage. And she would tell these amazing stories of how people she hardly knew like neighbors just showing up unexpectedly at her door, offering her these big bags of groceries. They had no idea how much she needed. You know, they didn't know anything about her situation. They just thought, here, we, I thought you might be able to use these, not knowing how much she really needed them at that particular moment. Or she'd talk about people who would just give her these amazingly large tip, tips for her massages, just as she really needed some extra money. And no matter how small her income was, her lifestyle was always very comfortable and gracious. It was, even when she had very little, she had the most beautifully furnished apartment. She always had a car to drive. She had beautiful clothes. And she always had enough to give to other people. I, that was something that always struck me about her. At any gift-giving occasion, her gifts would always be the nicest, the most beautifully wrapped, and sometimes she would be the only person to re remember that somebody in the group was having a birthday, birthday. She'd be the only person to bring a gift. You know, <laughs> it would be this beautiful, wonderful, just amazing gift. And I just watched her over a number of years just prosper and prosper and prosper, you know, in a way that grew to um, include owning an extraordinarily beautiful home that she was able to buy with the help of a friend who she helped, who so she was very kind to, and he reciprocated because he had the financial wherewithal to help her. She married just a wonderfully loving partner. Uh, the two of them went on to own their own spa. Um, you know, they're the middle of a wonderfully supportive community of people who love them and family, friends who adore them. And she just has this all round bountiful life that's never been created with a huge income. And her financial wealth has grown, too. It, it's often through generous gifts from people who love her because she is someone who's always given her loving attention so freely. And it would all often come back to her in material gifts from loving friends. 
And what always struck me the most about her was her incredibly positive attitude and her ability to remain upbeat even through really challenging times. So clearly, the secret of her prosperity came more from her open heart and open mind than from her financial dealings. Um, and you know, there's, there's just countless books and seminars and techniques available these days about how to make more money, more money, more money from a pretty you know, down-to-earth financial strategies to metaphysical techniques to law of attraction, how to have, you know, make a bucks. But before focusing on how to make more money, I think an important starting place is to learn to be abundant with what we have now. And if we want more money, to understand why. Prosperity is available to us without limit. We can always have all that we need to fulfill our highest purpose and live our our highest joy. And for some of us, this requires a lot of money. And for others of us, you know, we require much less. And as we unhook the idea of prosperity from the prerequisite of a lot of money, it suddenly becomes a lot easier to attract money easier to live with less money, and easier to experience the abundant life God would have for us with or without money. Um, But Because money is such an important collective symbol of power. You know, it's so prevalent around the globe. To struggle with the lack of it is, is really consuming. And the more our energy is tied up in financial survival, the more we're limited in our ability to thrive and and to serve the collective good. You know, it really keeps us small. Um, Financial struggles inhibit our happiness. Um, it, It inhibits our greatness. It inhibits our ability to make a difference in the world. The the spiritual principles of prosperity are, for the most part, diametrically opposed to the, you know, the mundane rules of finance. Uh, Much of the way money circulates in the world today is based in fear. Uh, Greed, materialism, miserliness, selfishness, these are all manifestations of fear. And when we fear there's not enough to go around and there's not enough for us, we're much more likely to overemphasize acquiring and holding on instead of just flowing. Alternately, when we just live from that place of scarcity, we um, we might limit what we're willing to acquire, fearing that you know, the more we have is, is somehow synonymous with exploitive greed and not consistent with the spiritual life. When we believe there's not enough to go around, it, it's really easy to feel guilty if we have more than others. Uh, d- just imagine what would happen if we went about the process of breathing like this, you know, or sucking in breath and holding it as long as we possibly can, even after it stops sustaining us for fear there won't be enough air, you know, so we're just holding on to every last bit we have. Or going to the other extreme and exhaling but not drinking in again for fear that we're going to take more than our share. Or trying to store up a lifetime supply all at once, all in one breath. Or of taking little teeny shower breaths. We're worrying about each breath. I mean, the the analogy could just go on and on and on for every single variation of money neurosis. And we can learn a lot about prosperity by using breath as a model. Because money is energy, and it, it really needs to follow that same easy, continuous flow, um, you know, as breathing if it's going to really nourish and support us. 
So before we go any further, let's just stop and breathe. Just relax for a moment and close your eyes. And just take some deep, full breaths, just filling your abdomen as well as your chest. And exhaling just as fully. And with every breath, imagine your highest good, financial or otherwise, to be as plentiful and accessible as the air you're breathing. Just affirm that you are as deserving of this abundance as you're deserving of breath. And imagine that you're having plenty doesn't make there be less for others any more than your breath robs others of theirs. And imagine that letting go of what's no longer serving you as well as sharing your abundance with others as safe and easy as breathing out. As you breathe in deeply and exhale completely, feel the interrelatedness of giving and receiving, of letting go and taking in, of ending and beginning, each giving rise to the other. (sighs) So open your eyes again. And as we continue today's class, just be especially aware of your breath. And just every now and then, just Take a moment to breathe in really fully. Exhale really deeply. Just imagining yourself taking in everything that's for your highest good and letting go of everything that you no longer need. And um, we'll do a little bit more with this breath in in with the good, out with what we don't need. We'll do a little bit more with this meditation. But I want to just suggest that you use this as a way to put yourself to sleep tonight. So, um, you know, money is actually really easy to manifest through spiritual work because it really isn't anything tangible or concrete. It's an abstraction. Um, It's energy before it becomes something specific. Consequently, it, it lends itself really well to spiritual experimentation. Our state of mind can just easily generate energy. Um, You might be able to remember a time when you were exhausted, so exhausted you were completely out of steam, but then something got you excited enough to find a whole new wave of energy. So just imagine, imagine being as tired as you've ever been as tired as you could possibly be, short of just dropping over. (laughs) And you suddenly found out that you have won the bazillion dollar lottery. Don't you think you would suddenly be wide awake and jumping with energy? Don't you think, you, you know, adrenaline would be flowing, energy would be moving your body with energy you had no idea you had left? Now, in this example, it might seem like something outside of yourself gives you energy, but what really makes the physical shift is your state of mind. And if you psych yourself up to have more energy, you can call it up. And in in much the same way, people who attend firewalking workshops, for example, psych themselves up to trust that fire won't burn them and they're able to walk over hot coals. I just know a lot of people who've done them. 
spoon bending is another kind of workshop like that. People, you know, just get, get into a workshop context with some, some leaders who've done it before. Everybody gets in the right mindset. People psych themselves up. Suddenly people are taking metal utensils, twirling them around like silly putty, and boom, the, the, the laws of reality as we think we know it suddenly become very pliable. Money energy can be called up as easily as physical energy, as, you know, easily as any of the rules of reality can bend with our minds. Even though it may, may seem as impossible as walking on fire or, you know, bending metal utensils easily. Um, the only thing making it difficult is, um, is, I would say, just the seriousness and power we give to the idea of money and the fear we surround it in. Um, you know, we just put a lot of a lot of stuff in our money, you know, a lot of ideology that it is way bigger than, you know, the very simple abstraction that is money. Money is energy before it's turned into anything. But, you know, too much energy of any kind without a use for it can do more harm than good. I mean, imagine drinking coffee till you're bouncing off the walls and can't relax or the fire that cooks your dinner becoming the kitchen fire that burns down your house. Amassing money energy without giving it a clear purpose or direction isn't always a good thing either. I, I mean, many people who've been lottery win winners or have come into big financial windfalls have had that experience. They haven't really had a good time with their money. It hasn't really served their highest good. It's kind of been like a downward spiral for them. If we make money our goal without being clear about what we really want from it, we might succeed in creating more money but still not have the experience of safety or self-worth or freedom or happiness or love, you know, or the things that are our true desires. It may even distract us from some of these deeper callings. Now, the inner experience we crave is always accessible to us. It's, it's often much more so than we imagine. And it doesn't hinge upon the manifestation of external changes. Often, um, we put off happiness. You know, we, we put it off assuming we need to achieve certain goals and circumstances first in order to be happy. But, the, you know, the, what's, what's more true is that when we actively build into our lives now the inner experience we want, we start at more of an energetic level calling to us all of the external outcomes that match it. Uh, the, and that will support our continued happiness. You know, the state of happiness is something we can just call up in a moment. You know, it's, it's not that hard to change an attitude. And the more we can have those moments of changed attitudes, the more we actually change an energetic vibration that we emit. And that vibration is what calls to us the more physical, kind of granular circumstances that match it. And when we're in the doldrums and worried and fearful and angry and judgmental and resentful, then, you know, we're in kind of a, a, a lower vibrational state that draws more of the same to us, that draws circumstances that are just going to keep us in that kind of nagged out place. And when we take ourselves to more of a higher vibration of love and inner peace and joy and gratitude, then we call to ourselves the circumstances that, that perpetuate those, those higher vibrational emotions. You know, the circumstances that really make us happy. 
It's, I mean, it's that simple. The inner state attracts the outer circumstances. So um, we're going to do a little exercise with this. This is where you get out your, your pen and paper. And uh, first off, just write down what it is that you most want from money at this time. As in, uh, maybe I want a new car, or I want more time, I want a vacation, I want to pay all my bills, I want to start my own business, I want, you know, what is it you want? I want to buy a house. Write down, you know, some of the, the maybe the, the biggest things you would want to use money for. And then when you've done that, um, next step is to identify the three most important essence experiences related to having these things that you could get with money. Now, an essence experience is the inner feeling you believe these things will give you. It could be, for example, security, freedom, joy, comfort, self-worth, Relaxation, creativity, fun, love, pleasure, peace, power, and, you know, etc. Creativity. I think I said that one twice. <laughs> but you, you find yours. The three inner experiences that, that you would want, you know, to, to get from having money and buying yourself this whatever it is you most want. Okay, when you got that, we're going to do another little meditation. So um, close your eyes again and relax your body. Ah, quiet your mind with some more of those deep, full breaths. again with every breath. Imagine your highest good to be as plentiful and accessible as the air you're breathing. It's all part of the, the beautiful sea of light backdrop to everything that we've celebrated in recent months as we've come into the seasons of greater light. You can think of it as the summer sunlight. In a more quantum physics way, we can think of it as the zero point field. In a spiritual way, we can think of it as God, the universe, the limitless source. Just imagine the essence of this beautiful light to be beauty, it's the source of absolute well-being. It's pure divine love. And just feel that there is this, this ocean of divine light, divine love that is always there around us, within us, just holding us. rocking us gently like the most loving parent 
and feel yourself now just held in the, this, this loving embrace that, that is just so blissful. It's pure pleasure. It's bubbling joy. And you are just being rocked in this beautiful ocean, breathing it in with every breath. And affirm that you are as deserving of this abundance of God as you are deserving of breath. This is your birthright. That this light, whatever you call it, God, Goddess, the universe, it loves you. It is love. It is you. It's all around you. It is your source. It's unlimited. And you're having plenty doesn't make there be any less for others. Any more than your breath robs others of their breath. That this, this divine light see is truly limitless. And understand that deep peace and unconditional love allow us to draw freely from this divine source. This is how we, we tap the limitlessness. That as any one of us learns this secret, that all we need to do is open our hearts in unconditional love, and, and deep, profound peace, we naturally, effortlessly raise others up with us. We make there be more for everyone. So the more we open to our spirit-given abundance, the more we help others to do the same. Now imagine that the quickest route to having the money and all the other external circumstances that you want is to feel it inwardly first. So start that right now. Just take a couple more deep prosperity breaths, inhaling deeply all that is for your good, exhaling everything you no longer need, And now create the inner experiences that you most want from having money. And fill yourself now with whatever it is, be it safety, freedom, love, joy, comfort, pleasure, fun, purpose, whatever you think you need money to feel, just feel the fulfillment of it now as a sensation in your body. Just let it well up within you, just bubbling up. And picture yourself having all the things you want as though you already do. Tell yourself that you've already succeeded. and open to the emotions of satisfaction and well-being that go along with having your dream. And just let this little daydream, this imagining that we're having, let it be just a pleasurable moment to luxuriate in, to just walk around in, and then take another deep breath. And as you're ready, bring your attention back to the room around you. Open your eyes. Now, along with this inner work that you might want to go back to and repeat from time to time, um, working with this meditation a bit, our work for this week also includes taking some external action. And for this, come up with some things to do that will incorporate more of 
the inner experiences you desire into your life now. For example, if you want money to give you more time for activities that you enjoy, build into your life now, even in a small way, more enjoyable activity. If time feels too scarce for this, you might need to reprioritize how you spend your time. Remember our session last week that was so much about letting go. If you want money to give you a feeling of security, see how you can create more emotional and physical security in your life now, even in some small ways. If you want more luxury and beautiful things in your life, just begin now to give yourself, you know, just small things of superior quality. You know, we don't need to live beyond our means, you know, to give ourselves a taste of something of quality. I mean, go to the most expensive restaurant in town just for a beverage or an appetizer. Just imagine that this is, you know, (laughs) where you come all the time. If you want a new home, go on a real estate site and start, you know, Start looking at home, seeing what you like the most, see what you would choose. Let yourself just luxuriate in the presence of luxury without having to purchase it all yourself. And these are just a few suggestions. The idea here is to build joy and contentment into your life now in whatever way best serves you and in whatever way you, you know, you want more money to, to bring joy and contentment to you. What, you know, whatever it is, whatever those essence qualities are, look at how you can have more of that in your life now. And be creative and fun with it, because the more you have fun with it, the more you create the vibration of the, the circumstances, the tangible forms that you are calling in. You know, and importantly with this theme around money, if you feel in any way trapped or driven in your pursuit of money, you know, if you just really deeply believe you must have money in order to be safe or happy or worthy, just take a step back and and look at a bigger picture, that money really isn't the problem or the solution. Um, as with any addiction, the money addiction is, is, a, is a powerful one. It really, it really is. And it can dull our awareness to what, what it is we truly need. So ask yourself, um, if not money, what is it that I'm really afraid of? If I didn't feel stuck around the issue of money, where else in my life might I feel st- stuck? What do I want even more than money? And let the answers to these questions direct you to solutions that will truly heal and fulfill you. And I want to talk a little bit about how to best deal with times of scarcity. Because times of scarcity often precede huge leaps forward. You know, think of how, you know, a bow and arrow works. (laughs) Where you have to pull it way back, and that's what creates the force to propel it forward. And similarly, a runner needs to take a few steps back to build momentum for a big running leap. Um, A similar principle is in effect here. How we work with the leaner times of our lives has a lot to do with what we allow to happen next. And because many of us have learned to connect money with such large issues as well-being, self-worth, even survival. When our money supply gets threatened, we tend to feel threatened in all these areas as well. I mean, money fears can literally translate into feeling like survival fears, even though we are far from that level of life and death survival. You know, in in truth, we know that skipping a vacation or having to take a job we don't like or get a roommate 
isn't life-threatening, but it can feel that way. We may become so wrapped up in our feelings of fear and powerlessness that we don't even see how many practical options, options we have for making less money more manageable. So an important first step in times of scarcity is to address our state of mind. Because action taken from a place of anxiety and weakness is bound to create more of the same, more to be anxious about, more to leave us feeling weak. When money is scarce, we often start worrying, panicking, withholding, and this sows the seeds of more scarcity. Instead of worrying, think about the empty, barren times in nature, as, you know, with winter, and what that time is for. Winter really is a concentrating time when energy pulls in and pulls back in order to gain momentum for the next burst, burst of growth. And your time in financial scarcity can be a very potent launching ground for your next phase of prosperity if you can recognize it as such and work with it, um, you know, really work with the financial season you're in instead of denying it, resisting it, fearing it. And, you know, here's some things to do in lean times that can help you make the most of them. I mean, first off, dream. Times of financial scarcity are really good times to just do some dreaming and envisioning of what you want to do when you do have more money and what you want to do with your life in general. Just as you have faith that a season will change, and I lived in Minnesota, so believe me, you know, we needed some faith to trust that eventually winter would end and spring would come again. But we knew it would. Um, you know, just as you, that kind of certainty exists, feel the same certainty that your financial season of scarcity is going to change as well. And let your dreaming fill you with pleasant anticipation for what the next growing season is going to bring. Use this time to turn within, like hibernating in winter, like a, you know, butterfly in the cocoon. So instead of externalizing your energy through spending, you're internalizing and, and creating, really creating a vibration that's going to call in the next phase of your life. The next thing to do is to clean house, materially and emotionally. And we did a whole session on that last week, so I won't go deep into that. But lighten up, let go of the past, let go of material stuff you no longer need. Um, if you missed last week, we'll give you the access code so that you can find it and review it. Um, and for anyone who's new this week, I'll tell you about the additional materials that go along with each session. There are written materials and recordings, and you'll want to check out. I'll tell you how to find them. So the next thing is to really become conscious of how you flow money. There was an exercise on this in last week's lesson. I didn't get to it in the live class, but it was in the written material. And it goes like this. In the last year, how, these are the questions. How have you used your money to enhance the quality of your life, to intentionally prosper someone else, to support something you believe in? And the suggested practice is to spend the month asking yourself, Every time you spend a cent, is this expenditure taking my life in the direction I want it to grow? I'm, I'm sorry, in the direction I want it to go. Is it enhancing the quality of my life or prospering someone I would like to see prosper? 
or supporting something I believe in? And if you answer no to all three of those questions, then maybe rethink spending your money in that way. And let the lack of excess money really help you get clear about what's really important and spend only on that. Become out of necessity a really good steward of your money, using it really only in the highest way. And this will make you magnetic to more money. It'll also teach you how to wisely use more money. And sometimes it's this lesson in being a wise steward and wise spending that's just the preparation you need in order to attract a significantly larger flow of money into your life. Now, another point um, is to find ways to enjoy life that don't require money. Just become aware of any ways you've become dependent upon money for recreation, for self-nurturing, for self-esteem, for socializing. Um, What you create and what you experience and how you grow when, you know, the easy crutch of money is taken away might be a big part of why you unconsciously called this period of scarcity into your life. There may be important lessons there. And finally, imagine that financial scarcity has come to teach you how to be abundant. If you've been forced to pay more attention to money because of its absence, just really make the most of the opportunity. Just prepare your state of mind, your space, your habits to receive more money. And instead of feeling powerless in your lack of income, adopt the mindset of a student who's, you know, chosen maybe to forego an income temporarily in order to learn and prepare for the future, in order to learn how to attract a better and better income. So really learn all you can about money, particularly in those areas where you see your own weaknesses, maybe in the areas you tend to resist. So for example, if you have a great idea for a nonprofit, but you don't want to learn grant writing, or you want to lead workshops, but you don't want to learn how to promote them, or you've received an inheritance, but you don't want to learn how to invest, you know, your resistance, that might be the only thing keeping prosperity away. Um, If you've pursued your callings and interests in life, but you're struggling with the absence of money, then an education in money might be exactly what you need, especially if you've never undertaken that study before. You might find... It opens all kinds of doors and brings you back to your true calling in ways, you know, you would never quite foresee. So last but not least, I want us to do just some spiritual work together. And this is a group prosperity prayer. And it's written in the, um, it's in the, the written materials and my um, suggestion is that we, we all do it every day for the next week on behalf of our whole group. And, you know, every time I work with a small group of us who are here now, I invite us to include, since time and space are very permeable to consciousness, time is far more illusionary than it appears I invite us to include all of those who will be reviewing this recording in the future, all of those who've done this exercise in the past, all of those who will do it in the future. And because, you know, just because we're willing to be imaginative enough to hold each other in the light, um, that's... Consciousness is that powerful. We, we can all be together, hearts and minds, creating a very powerful um, energy force that works on, be, on behalf of all of us. 
So what I want to suggest is that we all do this prayer at least once a day for the next week, holding this whole network of Miracles Course participants in mind. So, you know, as we raise ourselves up, we raise everybody up with us and vice versa. So one more time, just relax and close your eyes. And just take some deep, full breaths. Filling your abdomen as well as your chest. Exhaling just as fully. And with every breath, Just imagine your highest good to be as plentiful and accessible as the air you're breathing. Whatever it is you most want in life, whatever it is that feels scarce, imagine it to be as plentiful and as accessible as the air that you're breathing and affirm that you are as deserving of this abundance as you are as deserving of breath. Imagine that you're having plenty doesn't make there be less for others any more than your breath robs others of theirs. Imagine that letting go of what's no longer serving you as well as sharing your abundance with others is safe, and it's as easy as breathing out. As you breathe in deeply and exhale completely, just really feel the interrelatedness of giving and receiving, of letting go and taking in, of ending and beginning, each giving rise to the other, And now imagine everyone in this miracles course joining together at the spiritual level and rising together in prosperity. And if you feel any lack of faith in your own right to an abundant, joyous life, imagine there are many others who now have faith in you and are helping to lift you out of scarcity. Imagine your love does the same for them. Know that as we hold this prayer for each other's highest good, we access the amplifying effect of unconditional love. And then there's no limit to what we can create. And just imagine the joy of every other Miracles Course participant as they experience prosperity miracles this month. Join with them at the level of empathy and feel their excitement, their gratitude, maybe their relief, their empowerment and joy and fulfillment as money flows into their lives. Imagine this so vividly that as you feel other people's joy, it becomes your own joy. And as you release a prayer on their behalf, it comes right back to you, multiplied, lifting you up, so that even if you doubt Even if you have faith in your own ability to manifest prosperity miracles, imagine there is now a whole network of souls who are having faith in you, who are setting forth a prayer on your behalf. And just feel the joy of this, letting good feelings just reach a peak of intensity. bubbling joy, gratitude, faith 
in the abundance of life. And then gently let go. Bring your attention back to the room around you. (sighs) And an assignment from last week is to start clearing out material things that you don't need or want. I suggest doing that all throughout the month, especially if you have a lot of stuff to let go of. It'll make an amazing difference energetically in the manifesting that we're, we have coming up. So go back and read, read that lesson. And as always, you know, I'm doing this uh, class nowadays as my volunteer service on behalf of a handful of um, nonprofit organizations. I started doing it at the beginning of COVID. And I'll just keep doing it this way because I like to, which means I would like you every, for every class you attend live or review via the recording, please go to the organization that sent you here or if you found it through my email or website, go to the one, one of the organizations that I've listed and give a do- donation. It's important. Um, for you to give value to the work you do and to, you know, support our spiritual centers. Also, you know, if anyone knows a worthy nonprofit organization that could use a class like this, you know, as part of their uh, offering as a way to just raise some extra funds, you know, let them know about me, let me know about them. I'm a, I could take a few more easily. I'm not actively seeking, but I'm, I'm really open. So anyone who knows of such a place, feel free to, you know, connect us. Anything else? I think we're pretty good to go here. Unless there's something burning. Well, um, as always, it's a pleasure, a blessing to be with you all. Till next week. I love and bless you.